All right, the example says this. You have two vectors, A and B. Where's my B? Here's my. You have two vectors like this, 2, negative 6, and negative 3, 4, 3, and negative 1. Uh, we need to find a vector. We need to find a vector, which will be also our free vector, so it will be a three-dimensional vector, with a bunch of properties. Uh, it must be unital, so the length must be 1. It must be perpendicular to A. It must be perpendicular to B. I just make a quick comment in relation to this perpendicular test. Uh, Perpendicular test is something can be, which can be effectively done with the, with the dot product because when you look at the two angles which are perpendicular to each other, you're looking at the that angle between them, between them is 90 degrees or phi and 2, which you know implies that the cost is zero. And remembering where the cost is sitting in the dot product now, remember now we can define angles for any dimensions, in fact, not specifically three, because we now have cautious schwartz inequality which effectively means that the dot product of x and a is zero. Similarly, if you make the same interpretation of this orthogonality condition, you will have that the dot product of x and b must also be zero. So the whole task is this. We need to find a vector in R3, which is unital, which, is, which makes this happening and which makes this happening. We interpret it as geometric conditions in the algebraic terms. So the search for this vector uh, goes like this. We just introduce the unknown components of this vector, x1, x2, x3. And we, well, first we'll look at these two conditions. We just forget about this for the time being. We'll come to this later. So we look at these two conditions, which are dot products. And if I use the way we compute the dot product, and remember we do that by multiplying these coordinates each by each and then plus them, that's the result of that, 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 that the kind of result we will have. Actually, this is the product of this vector with this. 4x1, 3x2, and negative x3. It's the dot product of this x vector with this b, so it's this condition. Ah, it's actually, I opened the second one, and that's the first condition. It's a dot product of this vector with a, 2x1, negative 6x2, 3x3. So our job is to solve these two systems of linear these two equations, two linear equations with three unknowns. That's why we're among the solutions of these equations, we will be looking for the vector with this extra property. Now, now we have lots of ways to solve a system of linear equations. Uh, I'll do it two ways. First, I do the way like in a unified Gaussian elimination way, because it will, it will show us what this what kind of solution we're looking at. So here's the augmented matrix associated with this system. Right? 4, uh, 2, 4, negative 6, 3, negative 3, negative 1, 0 is the right hand side. By the way, these kind of systems, if you remember, they have a special name. It, they have, they, they have, we call them homogeneous systems. This kind of system will always have solution, unique or multiple, but there will be a solution all the time. So uh, I did the row echelon form here. In fact, I did reduced row echelon form. Uh, I don't have a solution helper for this, but I hope by now you're so proficient with the ro reduced row original forms, you don't need any solution helper to recover the details which I, which I hid under the dots here. Uh, but if you do, then probably you have to work a little bit harder than that, than you, than you, than you have been working by now. So that's the, row, uh, that's the reduced row original form of this. Again, I'm not gonna torture you with the details here, just you can, I hope, I sincerely hope you can recover these details without the help. Now, in the reduced row echelon, if, if you have something in the reduced row echelon form, the solution is, when you start doing the back substitution, the solution is immediate. So this is my x1 column, this is my x2 column. This is a non-leading column, and that's the column which we will parameterize, and that's the name of the parameter I will use. Uh, here's the solution. It's like a straightforward one. x1 is negative, oh, sorry, positive lambda on 2, x2 is negative lambda on 3, and x3 is just lambda. Of course, I can put this in the vector form, and that's the solution in the vector form. So the solution to these two equations is the straight line. Something, if you think about this question geometrically, we have two vectors, and we're looking for the vector which is perpendicular to the two, 
Quite expectable, the answer will be a straight line perpendicular to the plane for the, for the given two vectors. And that's the equation of this line. Now, from the bunch of the vectors on this line, we need only one. We need only one, but with extra condition like so. We haven't really looked at that condition yet. Now we're going to do that. So what I will do, I'll just choose one vector out of this bunch. It's an infinitely many vectors here in this line. I will choose the one which makes numbers easy. So I choose the one which corresponds to lambda equals 6. If I put lambda equals 6 across this vector, the vector will be this one. So it's one of the vectors, which is a solution to this system. Not all of them, but one. And now all I have to do, I have to normalize this vector. I have to compute the length of this vector and cancel it out from my vector. So the length of this vector, do I have the computation for the length? Yes, I do. The length of that vector, that's the sum of the squares of the components, 3 square 9, negative 2 square 4, 36 square 36. It should be 7, right? Uh, yeah, it's 49 and yeah, 7. So all I have to do, I have to cancel out 7 from this vector. So the proper answer to the vector will be oh, plus minus 1 on 7, 3, negative 2, 6. Why plus minus? Because on my line, one unit of vector goes one way, and the vector which is in the opposite direction of the same length as the other vector, which also meets this requirement. So in fact, this task of finding the vector which meets these three conditions has two solutions, two unit of vectors, one in one direction, and the, un the, the other one in the opposite direction. And that's the, one of these vectors will be the answer, whichever you like more, probably with the plus. Now, there is like a, when you understand the geometry of what's happening in this question, when you, I guess, you see, this conclusion we come up here, the conclusion that when you look for the vector perpendicular to the given two, you end up with a whole line of vectors. That's a conclusion we came up in the pure algebraic terms. We're, we're just, all right, of course, our experience with the geometry also suggests that. I mean, if you have extensive experience with the three-dimensional three geometry, you probably already expecting this kind of answer. But if you think about this, we come up with this conclusion with no geometry. What this like? We didn't refer to any geometry at all. We just this conclusion that the all vectors perpendicular to the given two is the line. We came up with it just in the in the row echelon form in, in the algebraic with the algebraic solutions only with the algebraic approach only. However, for the future, I mean, like if I, for instance, if I'm sitting in this time stress environment like the exam, and I, I need to find the vector which meets, which meets these two conditions, and I already know that like, it will be a line perpendicular to these two, and I don't need this line, in, I mean, like for the answer, I just need one vector, I don't need the line, it's whole line, I can do some shortcuts. The shortcuts will start here, rather than going after the complete solution, because we need only one vector, I can start by saying, let me just take x3 right away the particular value, like 1. Of course, actually, the better value was 6 here, but at the time, if, if, we, didn't have all of, if we didn't have all of these computations, we didn't know, I, I wouldn't know that actually 6 is, the, is a good choice here. So I choose with any, I, I start with any choice, which is not 0, and if I plug this one in here, then I have a system now of two equations with two unknowns, which I have to solve. If I solve this, yeah, I can solve this with the, some ad hoc method. For instance, I can multiply with this with a negative 2, add them together, which will vanish the presence of x1. x2 will be 12 plus 3, it will be 15. And here will be negative 6 plus 1, it's negative 5. Now, if I multiply this one by 2 and add these two together, then x2 will be gone, and uh, here we'll have 8 plus 2, it's 10. 3 plus 2, it's 5. So x1 is this, x2 is this, and x3 is 1. Look at this. The same vector we had here, but in, in a quite shorter solution. It is quite shorter because remember these dots concealing lots of arithmetic steps here. So if your task is just one vector, not all of them, because this is a complete solution, complete line of the vectors perpendicular to these two given A and B, you can 
I will make this shortcut, that's for sure. The only, the only risk in this shortcut is that, you see, when you do this complete solution, you know for sure which, which column you parametrize, right? Because you choose the one which is non-leading one. At this stage, it's not yet clear which column will be non-leading column. The fact that I, I, I replaced X3 with one, and I was lucky, this was the non-leading column. I mean, when you look at this system, can you predict which column will be the non-leading one without doing these steps? With some experience, you probably will be able to do that, but still you're running some risk. And if, if you hit the leading column with this sort of thing, it, you will end up with nonsense here. I can't.